this lesson will be displacement, velocity, and acceleration. Now, the previous lesson was just like getting us used to some sort of like formulas with x as the, the, the main thing, and it sort of like x replaces y a little bit, but we are talking about displacement. So displacement is x, okay? Velocity will be v, but we're going to be looking more into it, and acceleration will be a, okay? So it's very intuitive with that. There's a few other things that we can um, look at. So the learning goal is find velocity as a derivative of displacement and velocity as the double derivative of displacement. Okay, so let's write that down and let's go on. All right, displacement, velocity, and acceleration. Okay, so velocity is essentially speed. Speed is the absolute value of velocity. So we've got velocity, the absolute value of velocity is speed. Now, when I was young, I, I remember my brother came home and he asked me what, was, what speed was. And he said, and I said, I don't know, how fast are you going? And he goes, no, Neil, it's distance over time. And velocity is distance over time. All right. So, and in this case, it's displacement over time. So... If we have displacement, that equals displacement. The derivative of that over time, all right, is velocity. Okay. And if we were to derive that again, okay, so that's velocity. If we were to derive that again, we get acceleration. Acceleration, because acceleration is actually the change of velocity over time. So I can describe many occasions of accelerating. If you're pressing the accelerator in your car, you're accelerating because you're changing your velocity. You're going from 40 kilometers per hour to 60 kilometers per hour. Or... You're going from 100 kilometers per hour to 60 kilometers per hour. You're changing your speed over time or you're changing your velocity over time. Now, there's a couple of different ways that we can write it. Displacement will always be written like this as an x. Velocity, we can use v or we can use x dot. All right. Now, acceleration can be written like that or it can be a or it can be x double dot, okay? So that simply means the derivative of x, this means the double derivative of x. And in this case, x is what? It's displacement. All right, let's see how this works. Find an equation for velocity. We have what displacement is. Our displacement is x equals 2t cubed minus t squared. So let's find it, so I'm gonna use x dot equals 6t squared minus 12t. I simply have to derive it to find velocity. So velocity is the same thing, okay? So they're of equal value, those two things. Find an equation for acceleration. So what we need to do is grab this guy and derive it again. I'm going to use x double dot equals 12t minus 12. So that is a function or an equation for acceleration. Right. Okay, the C is when is the speed zero? Well, speed is pretty much the same thing as velocity, but it, velocity has direction, so positive and negative, but speed doesn't care about that. But anyway, when we talk about zero, there's no positive or negative zero. Zero is just zero. So when is the speed zero? Well, we have to go v equals zero. And this is our formula here. So, so we go sub v equals zero. And we get zero equals 6t squared minus 12t. Now we can factorize it out. So we get zero equals... Um, I reckon to get 6t out, so we get t minus 2. 
So therefore, when is the sp sp speed zero? At t equals zero and t equals two. Okay? So just so you know, to find velocity, we've got to derive displacement. To find acceleration, we've got to derive again. Okay? Let's look at the... We've got the same formula. Okay? At t equals two, find if it's to the left or to the right of the origin. Now, obviously, um, so this is advanced um, motion, so that means that we're either going up or down or across. Now, this case, obviously, is this across situation. We've gone left to right. So we've got to find out if it's to the left or to the right of the, the origin. So when we're finding where it is, what are we talking about? We're talking about displacement. We're not asking how fast it is. We're not asking how much it's accelerating. We're asking where it is. So that's displacement. So at t equals 2, x equals 2, um, 2 cubed minus 6, 2 squared. x equals, that's 8, so that would be 16 minus 24. So x equals minus 4 meters. Now, we can't have five, minus 4 meters, but what it does tell us, it's in the negative direction. Now, if we're going left to right, most likely, unless it's um, the question has told you otherwise, we've got the origin, most likely to the right is positive and to the left is negative. So is it to the right or the left of the origin? I think it's to the left of the, the origin. So, therefore... It is to the left. Okay, what direction are we traveling? Okay, now direction, we know what direction we're traveling with um, um, velocity. Okay, so once again, if we're going that direction, we have positive velocity. If we're going that direction, we have negative velocity. So... Let's derive this. I think we already have it in the last page, but there's nothing wrong with deriving it again. 6t squared minus 12t, okay? So at t equals 2, so all of these are related to this. The velocity equals, it's going to be 6 times 2 squared minus 2 times 12 times 2. And it looks like, V equals zero, okay? Because six times four is 24 minus that. Therefore, it is at origin, okay? So we don't know what direction it's traveling. I'm assuming that it's gonna go back around, but it could be, um, it could, could be different. So um, we don't know where it is. Okay, now find out if it's accelerating or decelerating. Um, essentially, decelerating is accelerating in the negative direction. A very practical example of what deceleration is, is when you hit your handbrake, okay? I mean, not handbrake, you should never do that. When you hit the brake in your car, you're decelerating. You're going from 60 kilometers an hour to 40 kilometers an hour because you've hit a school zone. That is accelerating in the negative direction. You are changing your speed there. So find it if it's accelerating or decelerating at t equals 2. So we need to use this formula over here. So let's copy and paste it. Um, copy. Paste. All right, so at t equals 2, at t equals 2. Acceleration equals 12 times 2 minus 12, and therefore acceleration equals 12 meters per second. So that means at t equals 2, it's getting faster and faster and faster. All right, so we're accelerating at a rate of 12 meters per second squared. All right, so we'll talk about that later on as well. Okay, um, okay, we have one more. Find the velocity and acceleration functions. So... Uh, velocity will be x dot, which is minus 2 e to the minus 2t. Um, acceleration is x double dot, 
and that will be 4 e to the minus 4t. All that, remember, we're using a little mini chain rule, so these always have to stay the same. And then we're just multiplying by the derivative at the front. And the last question is, what is the displacement, velocity, and acceleration initially? I put this question for a very good reason. Initially always means t equals 0. So let's substitute t equals 0. Um, t equals 0, x equals e to the 0, therefore x equals 1. So what is a displacement? Displacement is 1. So displacement is 1 metre. Okay. At t equals 0, velocity equals minus 2 e to the 0, which means the velocity is minus 2 metres square um, per second. And finally, the acceleration. Acceleration at t equals 0, the acceleration will be 4 times e to the 0, because we're substituting for all three of them t equals 0. So therefore, our acceleration is 4 metres per second squared. Okay? So hopefully that helps. And remember, initially means t equals 0. The reason that is 4 metres um, per second squared is that essentially acceleration is velocity changing over time. So we have to, whatever the velocity is, we have to put it over time again. And that's why we get velocity per se, um, over um, second squared for that reason. All right, cancel that. Peace.